lucky no one saw that. <laughs> Every time I cannot figure out how to move my freaking... I mean, we have to resize the screen. Still warm over there? Yeah, it's supposed warm. to be like 91, but it's been cooler. Mm. So that's 33. It's warm enough. I have this nice new um new one from last time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My sick... <laughs> <laughs> My sick voice, yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound like you're kind of like a hype man from like a rap crib. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? You don't know? <laughs> you don't know? Oh, daddy. <laughs> the remix is coming. Uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday. How was your travels? Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. Good, good. I got some of that. Sacred plane time in. Ooh. Get some Creative flight ideas. Creative aeroplane time, yeah. Yeah. And our travels were good. Kind of a... Yeah. Kind of the kind of trip that I shouldn't do but wanted to do and had committed to, like, probably two years ago and then completely forgotten about. Whoa. Whoa. The job, the job was so massively delayed on site with COVID and flooding. It was in Queensland, in Brisbane. They had big floods a couple of years ago. And so it was the new science wing of a big, expensive, fancy school, private school. It looks cool. Crazy space, just silly money. Like, I don't know <clears throat> how much they would have spent on that building. But anyway, pretty impressive space to work in. Uh, How long did so, it take yeah. you to get there? What's the flight time? Uh, it's like two have... two hours and a bit. Wow. It, it's so... It looks like it's like infinite <clears throat> amount of time, but that's like how long it takes me to get to Cal bottom of California. Yeah. What are you looking at a map? It just looks so much farther. Try that weird <laughs> projection problem of maps that like... Yeah. It looks far, but it's really not that bad. <laughs> So, yeah, it was one of those things where when I quoted the job, it's for a client who we do a lot of work for, like a lot. And right. we're also friends. And like when when I quoted the mm -hmm. job, he was like, oh, I think this one's probably one I'll go to Brisbane for to help install. And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> Two years ago. And it was fun, but it, <laughs> it's not something I particularly had time for this week, but. Made it work. And yeah, it was fun. It was good. All went pretty well, except for the box of LEDs that was still in the workshop that we needed. Oh, at your shop. Um, yeah. And the workshop had been checked checked last week, but they were not uncovered because this thing shipped like three months ago. Mm. It's been sitting in a crate in this building site yeah, for three yeah. months, so easy to miss those little things. Um. Mm -hmm. It made me want a few things. It made me want a good bill of materials function in Fusion for counting stuff. Do you yep. have any tr tricks up your sleeve for stuff oh like that? Oh, boy. There's a, there's a person oh, that was pretty boy. active on the Autodesk Slack. I don't remember their name, but um, they were making an add-in for Fusion called Bomber, B-O-M-M-E-R. Uh, it looks like it might be called getbomber.com. Uh, I, it's a paid thing, I think. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. Um, but it's something. Cool. GPT writes you a little plug-in for it. It's not a silly idea. Yeah. Something we run into semi-regularly. Where, you know, Josh has detailed a job and then we have to, like, manually count even just the hardware, like how many hinges are in this job? How many drawer runners? Right. Yeah, that's tricky. You'll have to get Revit mm. for that, I think. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> every I've seen time I get runs, it's uh, so slow. I haven't seen hat runs, but every time I get a Revit file from someone, I'm like, what? What? How is this Autodesk? Yeah, it's amazing yeah. how different software can be. I mean, it's good for what it does, but it's not something I want to use often. 
Oh, I'm sure it's wonderful for what it does. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going? What's happening? So we've been migrating like crazy, <laughs> all types of things. Part of hiring help for it with like operation stuff was I had all these back projects of like, we wanted to move our Shopify or our Squarespace to Shopify. We wanted to change where our courses were at. So we have that up now. We wanted to change away from MailChimp to now we're going to, we're we've been using Flowdesk, which has been great since you started using it. There's a mm. couple things it's missing that's kind of odd, but like, it's just such a better experience, like over for the most part, like it doesn't integrate as well with Shopify. There was some kind of cool stuff you could do before where it would like link in products inside of MailChimp pretty easily. Um, oh, wow kind of like build them for you with API features. But I mean, I got some kind of weird because I signed up off of your referral when I mm -hmm. went to pay for it. Like we made a whole draft email and we we're going to send our first email with it. And it was like, all right, now pay for it. And I was like, oh, Sly, you didn't say anything about that until wow. the end. And I was like, I was ready to pay for it anyway, but I was just like, let's let's get a trial out of this. And it's supposed yeah, to be $38 sure. a month or something. Yeah. And then we got a 50% off discount for a year because of the your sign-up link. So Ooh. it's $17 a month for a year Great. for unlimited like subscribers and and sends. So it's been good, but it's as as I jokingly put on our notes here, it's been interesting how much effort you have to put in to migrate things responsibly. Like ethically, <laughs> it, oh, it's you mean. pretty yeah, yeah. challenging to like not just like dump all your certain type of list, right? Like Mailchimp will give you who's subscribed or unsubscribed, and like I think if you were just like really wanting to do it quickly on some mm. of these things, like moving away from our old course platform to the new one, like it it doesn't export very cleanly. So I basically can just like import everybody. Again, even if they never wanted to hear from us, right? Like, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's tricky <laughs> trying to retain certain functionality of like segmentation before to the new one. It's different, right? It's just it's a lot of thinking and planning, and mm. but we're making good progress on it. It feels nice to be in new systems that are kind of clean and <laughs> don't have detritus and of you know years of use. What's your two cents on the sort of interface of Flowdesk for building emails? It's good. It's very simplistic, which I like. It's missing some... You can't, like, write your own HTML code. You can't do headers unless you make a separate text block. I don't know, not to get into all the nuances, but, like... Mm, no, nah, um, just your sort of overall. Because I've never used anything else. This was my first experience of any... EDM builder. Not EDM. EDM. Electronic direct mail. Like I was saying, I think, you know, the, the power of MailChimp is it's been been there and the leader for so long of kind of our like startup East kind of companies. Like if you were a bigger company, you probably used something before that that was around for it. But like, you know, with Shopify integrated, I could, for example, I could email a group of customers and it would theoretically know what all they've purchased and then only show them products that they haven't bought, for example, or that it suggested uh, it is suggesting to them. Okay. Yeah. That didn't always work that well. Like there's something about mm. like a certain number of orders had to be made. And then we were always up against this like free limit of, cause I, I never paid for MailChimp cause they had such a good free plan for so long, but we were kind <laughs> of always there right at the edge and it was always causing problems and we weren't getting all the features. So that I love Flowdesk and that it's like completely unlimited. Like there's no yeah, yeah. limits. Like not that I'm planning to send a million emails to people, but it is pretty challenging to like manage that. And it was just becoming such a problem that um, I also couldn't add anybody else any other users to mailchimp they only let me have two and i couldn't uh, change yeah. them yeah. it's just stupid stuff so it's just nice now that there's like a team sense to like working on these things that i'm not the only one doing all that so so yeah. 
Nice Good. one. Great. I like it. Cool. I wouldn't have paid for it if I didn't think it was yeah, pretty yeah. good, I think. No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I've been on the new M2 hardware. I, I remembered that Rhino runs a, a whip version, a work in progress mm-hmm. version of their software. And I, I did, I played this whole game like, whenever it was 18 months ago when I first got the M1 laptop and I was a bit uh, a little bit disappointed with how Rhino ran big files on Apple hardware having come from PC I was like oh this is this is mm-hmm. laggier and so I shopped around and discovered that right. you could run the whip stuff anyway back then I got frustrated with how sort of unstable the work in progress version was even though it was faster <clears throat> anyway, so I've done all of that again and I've just out of in- curiosity I've downloaded the new Rhino 8 beta oh and it's it is so 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 quick <laughs> ridiculous oh, like interesting. yeah running my big like Kitter configurator file which has got I don't know 1500 blocks in it and a whole lot of text objects and 1500 and, and and i can run it in like a rendered viewport and just sort of pan around and it's like very very zippy so that was fun yeah. um wow i'd only really downloaded it before i got on the plane so then i had like this beautiful window and the, on the plane with the laptop out where i was just hmm. making changes to my rhino kit parts configurator that i've built Mm-hmm. And doing, I'm doing all this stuff that I'd just been procrastinating on that would like adding missing components. Like I haven't yeah. gone through that file for ages and added like the new drawers and doors and side panels and stuff that Johnny designed. And, right. And so anytime I was doing a custom quote with any of those components, I was basically redrawing them from scratch like an oh, idiot. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of like stopping for took me less than an hour on the plane to just like draw all of those components concisely, put them all, turn them into blocks, put the right, you know, snap points on them so they work in my configurator mm-hmm. logic. So nice to just have that little bit of focus time to make right. some progress. Yeah, there's so, yeah, a lot of that. Back to your point. Kind of like we need the temp. Yeah, we need right. the aeroplane simulator. Sorry. No, no, no. Right. For that focus mode. <laughs> Right, folks. That's a new Apple feature that. So you need to build. You need. You need to build this. This is what yeah. your kid. Kid of rooms can be. Are there kid of focus rooms, and yeah. it'll come with a a shortcut to create an Apple focus mode, or you go into your kid of room by RFID. It automatically triggers the focus mode, and it can't go back on for an hour, and you're stuck in the room. <laughs> And it just shakes a little bit. Can you make like a little oscillator that like yeah, it shakes, does a little white noise. Yeah, <laughs> you got this really like shitty fold down place to put your sketchbook. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be the Bad, worst little uncomfy table. chair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry, what were you going to say about templates? Oh, nothing major. Just it's just amazing how long you can go with that kind of stuff, right? Like not having a place where all your stuff is and trying to go find a singular file that's like somewhere. Something I've requested a few times from different Autodesk employees that I want faster ways to dump in files Mm. um, from like, I want like a component library that's just like a window on the side that pops open and I just go click, dump, dump, dump. Oh, Um, gosh. And you could like, pre-select whatever you wanted in those things or it's maybe by like a folder or a tag system Mm. i don't know of anything that's actually happening i think there's a hardware and fastener thing that they're kind of working on that's like the precursor to those kind of ideas okay that's cool um yeah i find that really frustrating as well like when you're in a project you're like oh i need to insert that hardware component and you slowly navigate to the hardware folder and then back to your job folder and right no 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 that could be heaps better. Yeah, I need good to idea. Share your 
the one one way you could do this, which would be mm -hmm. really a workaround, right? And I do it for customer files most most of the time is that importer that I still haven't shared that I made oh. with uh, GPT that allows you to basically run the script, select the files, and they're almost instantly just put into your timeline. And like, you can use step or I IGES, probably other formats, but those are the two that I use the most. And it just dumps them in as separate components, but there's awesome. no upload time. There's no like finding stuff. So you could have your own little ghetto folder of files yeah. and then just drag them in, I guess. Sick. Share the goods, man. Yeah, I think I'll share That's cool. it. Been, we actually have quite a few videos in the works, so I've been mm. trying to find which one goes up when. And What's um, what's the work? Because I've never used Fusion Scripts. What's the workflow? Like, what do you, do you go up and you go, like, run script, choose mm -hmm. run or something like that? I usually type S to search and then type oh, script yeah. and it pops up that window where you work <laughs> kind of manage add-ins and scripts. Uh -huh. And after you have the script in there, you just click on it and push enter and it'll Bloop. then do whatever it Fun. was set up to do. In this case, it opens the finder window and like gives you the option to go find where your files are. You select them, push enter and it just. And it puts them in. where? Into whatever in the file timeline. you've... And no, oh, it puts them straight, straight into the into file, file that's open. Right. Dude. It's pretty... I was shocked when it worked. <laughs> and it still has been working amazing. I was like, there's no way. This is just going to like... It almost feels like I'm like bypassing security or something, you know? Like, oh, you're not allowing me to... You're not allowing the software to like do all of its analyzing and... Um, How many... How many shots did it take you to write that script in GPT? Was it a single shot prompt or Three multi shot? Or four. Damn. You know, just that kind of like revision of like, oh, that didn't work. Here's the error code. Yeah. Give it back the error. Do it a couple more times. And then I think the only thing I did after, because I was like going to that event at the time, I the next couple days I realized, oh, it'd be nice if you could do something else. I forget. Or it was, it was doing a recursive thing where it was putting a component in a component. And I said, no, <laughs> there should only be one component here, not two. I literally plain text told it that back in that thread. It updated it and it was fine. So it's kind of cool. Something that Rob, I think, had mentioned, unrelated, Rob Lockwood. I think it was him. Is you can store scripts in a cloud directory, Google Drive, yeah, yeah. whatever. And so you have like a scripts folder. If when you set them up, if you reference that place, then they'll mm -hmm. update as Ooh. the team. You have to, each computer has to set up its own, yeah. its own fusion setup. I think, I don't know much about add ins yet, but I think an add in will give you more of a like, you wouldn't have to go run from the script. You could like click a button up in the yeah. timeline or something. Like which maybe like a, a nice or nifty dog bone or something. That's an add in, right? Right. A nice next step potentially. I'm I am currently taking a an online course on Python, so maybe I'll figure some more of this out <laughs> myself instead of having to a, ask GPT and have some more stuff to share. But it's been good. Cool. It's been saved me a lot of headache of, and time. So good, so good. It's really like just. I don't know, it just makes me think about how underutilized these software packages are. Like how we still, like you're digging pretty deep there, but now typically we just like skim the surface of right. functionality. I What I think is so crazy, and I don't, I think I got lucky in this case that this was a fr pretty easy solvable thing. Because like mm. G GPD doesn't even really know much of the API. I think it guessed at a lot of it. <laughs> And its knowledge from what was released at the time, potentially, 2021, yep. is really minimal. But I think once we get, you know, future access to, you know, and more digestible nature, that anymore, I'm just like, well, I want to do this thing. And I just ask it, you know, or ask, and I keep asking different ones, like, ah, oh, Bard. And it's like, I don't know, I'm an AI. And I'm like, all right. And then, like, the next week, it'll give me a better answer sometimes on yeah. different related things. That's so cool. 
All right, cool. I want to play with that. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we've got various things I'd like to do with that, just in terms of product modeling workflow, like mm, take every edge that's less than 20 millimeters and put a two mil fillet on it or, you know, just <laughs> little functions mm -hmm. where it's slow to pick all the little right. edges on a job. I think nice. I think that's kind of the the gut feeling we all got in that like API intro workshop thing at, at the Fusion Summit. And it was, you know, we didn't you don't like get that knowledge of how to do it by watching other people's examples, but it they were showing examples of things that were like that, right? It was like look for all the holes in a model and tell me a list of all the diameters so that I can have a list which was, it's super, like, that's a thing I really want. I want that list of, like, when I'm quoting a job, how many holes are in all these models and are they matching so I don't have to go measure cool. each one myself. You can yeah. use, like, the manufacturing space to do some of that, but it's not ideal for nesting, nested, you know, multi-part setups like that. So there's a lot of that. Like, I want to be able to fill it inside corners, right? Like, yeah. by a script, like instead of having a bunch of sharp corners. I wonder, or, coming back to the uh, bill of materials idea, whether we could write some simple thing to just be like, how many instances of this Cabernet component are there in this model? Oh, oh I bet you could absolutely cool. do that. Sick. All right. I mean, if it was enough of a thing, like, I somebody with real knowledge of scripting could definitely do it for a cost. <laughs> Yeah, whether absolutely. it's you and I with GPT, yeah, <laughs> hopefully soon. Oh, to have more playtime. So yeah, <laughs> I got off a plane last night and recording with you now, and then I need to go and paint a lot of plywood this weekend because we're just like maxed out here in production. We've had you a mean big like shop work, not like a home job. Shop work, yeah, yeah. We've got had two guys on site all of last week pretty much mm -hmm. a couple of inner town that's two and a half hour drive away and installing a big cabinetry job and we're just yeah we're very short so i'll be hustling the spray gun this weekend painting some clear coat i was gonna right. ask painting painting plywood is not a thing mm. i've really done you're talking about clear finish not clear painting, finish painting. sorry painting? yeah okay yeah yeah so i was gonna we we are still incredibly novice at finishing as as expert i mean i do it but it's it's not a thing mm. i like to charge for we just don't feel like we're very good at it so um, yeah we've got we've it took us a long time but we've finally got like a <laughs> a grown-up paint like clear coat solution like for years and years we right. had a really sketch like when we we're in kensington we had a, a room that we called our spray booth but it was just a corner of the shop which had big curtains around it and one fan in the wall right. to just sort of take out some of the <laughs> dust mm -hmm. a little bit of the dust but it was just like a sort of a white room that just got coated in whatever color we were doing at the time and we're right. just using those big like house painting guns which mm -hmm. blow through huge amounts of paint and Do that. using using a clear coat which is kind of nice products but sort of closer to house paint in terms of consistency so we had to use those big what are they called air airless spray systems mm -hmm. and we just used to go through so much product like buckets and buckets and buckets of bloody clear coat so it's Interesting. Anyway, a couple of years ago, we finally like reached out to a rep of a like a, a proper looking <laughs> finishing company, mm -hmm. and we're like, "This is what we make. What products can you recommend? We want water based." Anyway, we finally got onto this system, which is called Miratone, Miratech, blah blah blah, and it's a two yeah. two product system. So you spray like a a grain sealer first as the first coat. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, and it, it wets, wets, wets off the grain and lifts right. the fibers nicely, as as all water-based systems tend to do. 
and but because it's a it's not a top coat it's then beautifully it's a really easy to sand so it sands hmm. beautifully and then we do one coat of a top coat typically on most things oh, wow. on top of that and it's nice and and it just uses because we can now use a proper like cup That's hvlp right. Yeah, right. cup gun mm-hmm. pneumatic cup gun it's like it's so much more efficient like i think we cut our paint like product usage by like 75 percent or something like in terms of how many liters of product we were just like outputting out of the gun jeez it's a lot way less overspray and just yeah yeah. it's a bit slower to apply because it's not spitting out liters of paint Mm -hmm. per second easier to control much easier to control and yeah so yeah cool got a got a job going out next week yeah yeah someday it's great like it is I really like having finishing in house, but it is kind oh, yeah. of its own. It's its own profession, really. Like, like I can see why yeah. some shops just send it out. Oh yeah, completely outsource it. Um, I mean, we have a hard like. I, we've just made another effort of trying to find finishers to work with, and mm. it's still. I don't know. It's just. It's not a very advertised service, I guess, or a thing that the things we want don't seem like we have, you know, some customers are like, oh, I want this type of thing. And we've gone and looked and we've worked with some that are supposedly good and not at all. They've messed up multiple, you know, projects and we move on. And mm. I mean, from my perspective, too, it's like we don't have the skill set first, which, you know, could be remedied. But the space requirements for it are just like, I don't, when we were thinking about moving into this space, at one point I was like, oh, maybe we could make like a drop down, like curtain situation, like a shower space with filtration of some sort. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it just is largely improbable based, <laughs> you know, now based on what we have set up. So maybe if I didn't bring in the mill, that would have been, you know, possible, but I'd take a mill over a finished booth any day. So. I don't know. Yeah, really. absolutely. Absolutely. Is that what that guy on Insta in LA, Woby? Woby? Yeah. W-O-B-Y. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Woby. The, the guy that, with yeah, the... Yeah, he basically did like a... Yeah. That cool little fold-down curtain booth, if I'm remembering mm-hmm. rightly. Right. Really, that was a cute with like setup. a box fan that would... Yeah. Like yeah. filter out. Yeah. Yeah. But so all that yeah. stuff works so much differently, too, when it's like you as the sole proprietor versus like I have employees and they have to go home at the end of the day and their families don't like them covered in, you know, whatever it is that because it's not set up right. (laughs) I know we we got so lucky in that respect. Like our water wall spray booth setup is like quite an industrial solution. Having a water Mm -hmm. wall in in our size shop is I think quite unusual. We got the whole thing for free from Laura's university. They were like, Oh, I didn't. Oh, wow. Throwing it out from the ceramics department. Like, this is years and years ago when we were in Kensington. So it wasn't actually like damaged or like not. No, it was, it was fully fully commissioned and functional. And they're like, they were renovating that part of the building. And so we got in there and pulled out this huge thing that's got like a. 15 kilowatt fan on top of it it's a huge mm-hmm. piece of ducting and so we got That's that free we had fan. we had nowhere to put it when we we're in kensington so we just stored it and then finally right. when we moved to castle main we we're like cool it's time for the water wall and got to commission it and set it up and it's yeah it's great did, did you play I, the song water wall when you set it up <laughs> like a i don't know that an oasis so. <laughs> wonder wall Oh, Wonder Wonderwall. We'll still put the sound in regardless right here. It is a Wonderwall. Wonder Water Wall. <laughs> Episode title. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd rather have a mill as well. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that comes up all the time. Like, unfortunately, I don't I don't really want to spend the rest of the time on, on finishing. I don't like finishing all that much. I'm like too impatient, yeah, yeah. I think, partially too. Or I'm just like, I just want to make the next thing. I don't, finishing is hard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody else can figure that out. Yeah, good. Meow. 
Yeah, so everyone's pretty working hard over here. There's a mm-hmm. lot of over, overtime happening and people pulling together to get get shit done, which is great. But it was interesting. We had a friend, Tom, who used to work for us like five plus years ago, come and help mm-hmm. us last week, just like as a temp. Mm-hmm. And because we were, yeah, short staffed, we're like, we need more hands this week. So we pulled Tom in. He gratefully came and worked for us for the week. But it was really interesting having someone in the shop who hasn't worked for us for five plus years to kind of, it was, it was an interesting mirror for me of like, mm-hmm. um, Just, yeah. what, what, what are we still doing that we did five years ago and what, like how, how far have we come? Like we've really progressed right. in a lot of ways, but in other ways it's like, oh, we're still doing that. Gosh. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And then we had a really That's nice. Mostly little, good. Yeah, and look, it was mostly good, and it was a nice sort of reflection point. And Tom's Tom's got a beautifully analytical brain, so having him back in our space was nice to just sort of see what he thought of how, what we're doing now and how things had shifted and stuff. Um, and we had a really nice experience at our team meeting midweek where Sarah introduced this concept of doing a whiffle in the meeting, which is... Made everyone like when Sarah introduced it, everyone kind of just locked up a little bit of like, oh, do we, do we have to? And a whiffle is like what I feel like expressing. And it's got this quite sort of formal thing where you say, like, what I feel like expressing is dot, 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 dot. And then you have to say, you have to like pass that on to the next person. And oh, when, she no. intru- and when she introduced this in Slack the day before, she, everyone like, <laughs> It was a bit like, oh, okay, sure, give it a Mm -hmm. go. But all that said, when we got into it and got over the kind of nerves of doing something a bit strange like that or uncomfortable, we had this really nice team meeting where everyone was just like, there was so much sort of positive energy and like gratitude in the room for like, Mm -hmm. yes, we have an awesome team and thanks to everyone for like Mm -hmm. pulling together and helping each other and working hard and blah, blah, blah. It was really nice. It was awkward, yeah. but it was really nice. And I think we'll probably do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was just whiffling everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could, I can understand it, but the whole time you described that, I was cringing. I know. Like, yeah, yeah. it makes, yeah. I'm all about appreciative things, but it's like, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I've got a, a thing I was going to say, but I won't about <laughs> a person that may hear this someday. So it, it it's not my nature I, to to do those kind of things either. But it's like you know, almost like a trust fall or like mm. where like it has a purpose. But can we do it a different way? <laughs> <laughs> can we? <gasps> can we not? Yeah, Jay oh, and oh, I, I know. I got a. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say Jay and I had a funny moment on like the morning of before the meeting where both of us without having spoken to each other both of us had gotten gpt to help us with our whiffle content <laughs> we're like i'm gonna do this thing help what can i talk about <laughs> i know that reminds me of what was probably close to the last straw of the corporate firm that i worked for for oh, yeah. the one year i was out of school architecture there was a team building event i don't know whose idea this was because it was a pretty big firm person it might have been just like a personal goals setting building thing and they had those really corporate like you know you've got to set two goals for yourself and three goals for the team which was part of it and then like it was like a week of this stuff i swear and the event in particular they hired some consultant to come in and you had to break boards what? in front of everybody and i was like i sort of boards i just can't this is not me i cannot do this it's not that i'm afraid of being on display it's like this is a complete waste of my time mm-hmm. like I, <laughs> I do not want to do this at all like it is just not and you had to like write something on the board that you were like trying to break through it's oh, like i right. don't none mm-hmm. of that that does not work for me like Give me a hard problem. I'll just 
work on it instead. <laughs> Good. So I quit that no, job. No trust falls at PDX. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, maybe soon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Please hold. Please hold for trust fall. <laughs> Well, that's the end of my story. Sorry, I wasn't meaning to crap on your wiffle idea. Maybe we'll maybe I'll look into it. Oh, it quite came up. No, please do. Like that. That's why I brought it up because it was. Yeah. It was exceptionally yeah. awkward. The idea of right. it, but right. I did it. genuinely feel good in the moment. Right. Yeah. When you search for wiffle, where I live. You get women in federal law enforcement. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Just not the same thing at all, think. <laughs> Excellent. The Wiffle Foundation. Thing. <laughs> so you're almost your weekend. You getting out mm -hmm. of there? A couple of few hours. I'm going to film. Doing some, some filming. Filmed a video yesterday. Not all to come out at the same time, but they were kind of like, it was. it was almost like a, a necessity we we needed to tram the spindle on the router had kind of needed to for a while but it kind of like wasn't pertinent for some of our jobs never had done it before so that's a big like hurdle of cool part of what we were going to film yesterday it was like oh man we really should tram the spindle so that took precedent making a video mm -hmm. about how to do that because they're surprisingly from our experience, a little out there on how to do it, how to how to tram like a, a yeah. router spindle. A router, there's like no, bridge ports we've, sometimes, but then there's we've never done it. No. Right, and, and then yeah, same. We had neither. And then there's like a, a ton of people that do it with hobby machines. All you know, mm -hmm. videos all over the internet. I think it might be like that they either get out easily or you just kind of have to to start. I think I remember that about our Shapoko. You had to like tram it right when you got it um, yeah. or something like that because you build it yourself and so I think it's more necessary whereas like maybe with yours and my kind of machines it's like done at the factory and hopefully you don't have to do it very I think, often I think our techs do both of our machines were trammed when they were installed in our shop by the yeah. multicam technicians that makes sense Yeah, when, when they do the kind of commissioning you know set it up test right. how square it's running all of that mm -hmm. but that is mm -hmm. interestingly like not a thing with shop saber like they're very hands off and mm. it's all remote unless you really demand it and then you can pay to have them come out but what just they just different. truck truck the machine and it gets dropped in your shop and then it's over to you right right interesting yeah and I mean that was definitely a perk for me after hearing about expensive bills for other types of machines where it was required to have like basically subscriptions of service contracts and things and i was like i can't afford that you know like when i was starting yeah what's you know, the deal I wanted with service? the option oh it's all basically you you do all of it mm. and do Which you do I, it honestly it's been good like yeah. i'd say the biggest downfall i've had in that regard is they don't do a good job of making service there's like no service manual like there's a there's a book that comes with it, but like, just to be very honest, like you just kind of run into problems eventually. Like, oh, the belts need to be replaced, and you only find that out because it's loose and not yeah, tracking yeah. right. But there's not like, oh, after X amount of hours, you should like think about these belts. Mm -hmm. It's just very like, you'll get there someday. I think <laughs> I don't know what the mentality is, but I don't love that. Yeah, but I also appreciate not having like to have to pay for some every time I talk to them or we need help. So our two multicams every, I think it's every six months, a little thing will pop up on the screen saying your machine is due for service. Please parade, blah, 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 blah. And so we right. ping off an email and we arrange to have them come out and we do both machines on the same day. It's probably a half day of a tech mm -hmm. on site. What's it and, cost? You know, thousand bucks later. Every six months or something. And I'm sure it's stuff we could do ourselves. 
but I don't know. I've just it's always it's just been like that from the start, so I just accept it right. now. And it's and the techs are great generally, like they're very knowledgeable and they help yeah. us sort of sort out little quirks sometimes of like, hey, I'm struggling to network to this machine or get this bit of software to work, and they'll help with yeah. stuff like that. And Johnny actually got a bit of software. I don't think we're supposed to have. I think the multicam technicians have it, but we managed to get it off someone else. It's basically like a remote emulator for the control, which for your machine runs on a PC, whereas ours is like, mm-hmm. it's all on and the machine. Yeah, right. And so we've got this stupid Game Boy controller on the machine to do anything. But we've got now got an emulator of the Game Boy on Johnny's Ooh. PC, so you can like be standing on the PC and press run, oh, and the yeah. mach- machine will just right. remotely run, which probably sounds really normal to anyone running a machine on PC control like yours. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think quite, what you have is more a, common a on, for most machines. Mm, okay, yeah. I think I know, like Lagunas mm-hmm. are like that pretty commonly. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Cool, man. We talked about CNCs a little bit. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Just, just put a little teaser at the front. They do eventually talk about CNCs. You just have to wait. Yeah, just wait until the end of the episode. Well, we are um, well. limited by our... Ooh, we're both... Ty- that's good. Both typing in the same spot. Oh, it's pretty live. It's faster Goodbye. than our audio is. <laughs> Goodbye. See ya. Thanks. See ya. Have a good weekend. Good to see, see you. Bye. Ciao. Bye.